Now, the local market closing more than a third of a percent in the negative this afternoon, uh, brought down mainly by the miners. Makwe Masilela is from Makwe Fund Managers. He joins me now. Makwe, thanks for talking to us. It appears to investors, or it appears that investors are holding out. They're watching what is happening with these debt ceiling costs and these talks in the U.S. This revolves around, I would imagine, how much uh, the U.S., allows itself to borrow. Now, just explain to me why it matters and it impacts on investor decisions. What's happening with the debt ceiling costs in the U.S.? You know, all it tells us that if they are not able to increase the current 81.4 trillion U.S. dollar debt ceiling, then come at least as early as the 1st of June, the U.S. will default on their or debt obligations. And we know the consequences that, number one, their credit rating might be downgraded. We know already individuals and businesses are struggling to access credit because of that mini banking crisis that we've seen. So this will exacerbate the situation. And we know that already, as we are talking, the cost of living is high. So interest rate or borrowing cost, as we said in our intro, will continue to go up. And that will have an impact on the global economy, as we know that the U.S. continues to be the biggest economy. But yes, the talks have resumed today, and people are kind of optimistic that probably given the deadline that is very close, they might be able to come with a solution. But it's a question of wait and see. We continue to be cautious. And even the recent uh, market rally that we've been seeing, it has been kind of lonely because most global money managers, they prefer to be in cash because of the looming recession. All right, so it's important then that the U.S. has this buffer and that buffer's increased a bit. Let's see how the talks end off there. Let's bring it down locally. I want to talk about property fund Octodeck investments. I mean, these are the guys that are involved in inner city developments across the country, right? Stronger performance from them. And it's an interesting one to watch because it tells us what they think about the country's city going forward or cities going forward, municipal issues, uh, uh, just service delivery issues. What's their guidance telling us? You know, the guys, as you said, people will prefer to stay very close to work, and hence they are developments in the CBD of Tswane, Jobek, they continue to be more attractive. And as we have seen as well, they've got some of the industrial properties and we know when it comes to the logistics story stuff, stuff like that, they continue to be in demand, especially since we've seen the likes of COVID happening. And also when you look into their office space for obvious reasons that people are now working from home, other people are downgrading, you know, when it comes to office space, the guys manage to have good activity when it comes to their leasing and rental for all their sectors except for the office space. And yes, the rental income went up by 3.2% and the income that they're able to distribute per share to shareholders have just gone up by 10.7%, the dividend per share up almost 20%. But unfortunately, their profits as headline earnings per share is going down by 29%. And as you said, municipal issues continue to be a big concern, load shading, hence they continue to be cautious going forward when it comes to the new developments, even when it comes to some conversions. Yeah, very really interesting one to watch. Look, the issue of how insurers handle claims related to load shedding and power cuts. We had the state insurer Sassery also flagging that it might not cover unrest related to power grid failures. And then the private insurance firms also flagging, I mean, sometime warning that its profits may be hit by load shedding and weather related claims. I'm wondering whether that could eventually see higher premiums, but it's an interesting thing to watch when you're dealing with the country's biggest short term insurer here giving this warning. And definitely it is. We know the guys started by struggling when it comes to the KZ and floods. We know this year the president declared a national disaster when it comes to all the provinces except Western Cape and the Free State because of the floods. And we know the issue about electricity. They even went to the extent of saying they won't be covering those when it comes to claims relating to that. That tells you the pressure that they are feeling as well. And you look into my way, which is one of their direct insurers. Mm -hmm. I mean, consumers, because they're struggling because of high inflation and high interest rates, we can see the growth there is very muted. But only the specialized side of the business continue to do okay, the likes of the marine, aviation and travel. Marco, before I let you go, I mean, one could argue that the dust has settled somewhat on that huge hit the rand took uh, from the entire Russian arms saga. Uh, it, it, it remains bruised. It's still above 19 rand. One wonders whether this is now 
at least for this period, the new normal. Does this currency now sit above the 19 rand to the dollar mark? It's been some time, but a little bit of strengthening, but just not dropping lower past that 19 rand. What's your take on the local currency? I agree with you. We should see this as our temporary new normal. And as we have seen that the people continue to be negative towards the rent. And we've seen the dollar also trying to edge up today, especially after those retail sales numbers, which managed to bounce back. But for obvious reasons, local issues continue to weigh negatively on the rent, the likes of low shedding, the comments that we got as well today when it comes to the outlook the, of our economy, the risk thereof from the finance minister that they continue to be elevated. Mm -hmm. So yes, as the economy, we don't expect to see any growth. And even the numbers that we've seen coming out of our manufacturing and mining, you know, for February, for March, they tell you that there's a possibility that we might have a recession, given that the last quarter of last year, the economy had contracted by 1.3%. So there's a great possibility that come the first quarter of this year, we might not be able to see growth. Anyway, we've been told that for the rest of the year, we just expect our economy to grow by a mere not 0.3%, if not 0.2%. Makwe Masilela from Makwe Fund Managers. Thanks indeed for those insights. Uh, over to those.